Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown Balls fans. I am your host, Bull, and like I promised y'all last night, we are doing a film breakdown in this video, and I'm just gonna kind of highlight a couple of the things that I saw in this game, uh, you know, in ways that I think that the coaching staff kind of let us down. And, you know, obviously with us having a lot of key guys injured in this one, you know, it may, it played a very critical role in this game and what the final score looks like. Let's go ahead and jump into the film. All right, so this is the first play of this football game, right? We're gonna have Jalen Wright's gonna run right in between this A-gap. This is the play that we know uh, that Coach Heifel and Coach Halsley in this offense had something drawn up for. Georgia is playing man-to-man -man coverage and we saw something in their scheme that led us to understand that this guy's going to vacate from the hole that he's supposed to be going to uh, and he's just gonna come up right here. So this is kind of some of the stuff that P and I was talking about pregame, um, you know, that, hey, this team is so disciplined. This is what this guy was coached to do. And we're going to be able to win right here. Now, also, take a look. They've actually got three guys still right here. All right. So watch what happens as this play develops. Also, please keep in mind, you know, we talked about this in the earlier video, but we've got two of our starting offensive tackles are out for this game. Tennessee did a phenomenal job blocking in this game on, you know, running plays and in passing plays. Now, once uh, once Jalen Wright gets up to the second level, which is where he's at right now, this will be the first level. Once you get past that, you're at the second level. And then once you get past that, you're at the third level. But he does a great job of using his speed. He's a track guy, that's what P always says. He's a track guy, and look at him use that speed, right? But these guys are so good, they're so fast, they're so unbeatable, blah, 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 right? We could have done that all game long. Now, obviously, Georgia did adjust to that. You know, they adjusted to the way that they played that formation later on in this game, but it does not mean that there are not still holes, you know, in their running defense. We could have continued to run on them. I do not know why we did not, but we only ran the football 25 times throughout this football game. We see what ends up happening towards the end of the football game. Let's go on to the next play. All right, so this is a third and three situation, and we've got Georgia in man to man coverage. What we're gonna do is we're gonna motion over, uh, and you know, we're gonna throw like a quick little screen pass, but because they're playing bump and run coverage, you see that the only deep threat, the only safety is way over here. So we've got, you know, like whatever we want over here. We could have ran a slant right here with the fade right here. Hey, look, those slot fades are pretty much always there in man to man coverage. You know, we could have even ran it out right here. You know, uh, or, you know, we could have run a slant right here and a fade right here and then another slant behind that. A lot of things that we could have done, but instead we cop out with an idiotic play call on third and three. And, you know, this could have worked. So, look, this is really this is not even a screen. It's just like a quick little, you know, flat rock right here by the inside wide receivers come out. And, uh, you know, we've got a guy that's got to block one guy. And we're hoping that we can catch this football and get to the outside of this and create a wall with this block. But let's see what happens. Okay, this guy first off just does not get blocked. Okay, and this is Castles out here. He should have been able to make this block. That's a poor job blocking. But I think that before it was a poor job blocking, it was a stupid play call. And this is what I'm talking about with, we have got to get some fresh blood inside of this, you know, on this staff, right? Whether it's coaches, whether it's analysts, whether it's both. But stupid stuff like this is ridiculous. Let's at least stress these guys. Take a look, it's still early. It's in the first quarter, okay? We're up right now. Let's start to put some stress on them and let's start to build towards what we're going to start to do later on in this game, which you know could be something like what we just ran right here. Let's you know open it up first and then let's start to do these little dump off plays. All right, we're going on to the next play. All right, now I actually like this play call. We're gonna have a wide receiver kind of come on a short motion right here come to the inside so you know whenever you do that obviously the guy that's guarding him is going to have to kind of flow down with him and his momentum carries him to the inside but the wide receiver breaks back to the outside and you know this guy's going to run him off so that play was there to be made watch what happens our you know backup tackle in jeremiah crawford who did not play a bad game ladies and gentlemen he did not play bad but right here you've got to know that hey the pass is coming to your side son and it's coming out quick so what do you have to do here? You've got to punch this guy in his stomach, you know, or maybe punch him in his nuts. You've got to go low. You've got to do something that makes this guy get his hands down so that Joe Milton can complete this pass. Again, that's backups, you know, being backups. And you know what, actually, let me, let me go back just to taste it because it may not have been from Crawford's guy. This actually looks like, okay, so that's Ollie Lane's guy, right? So Ollie Lane, you've got to get your hands down. I think that it was Ollie Lane. Looks like they both got their hands up, but Ollie Lane, you've got to 
punch these guys low and make them get their hands down so that we can complete this pass, which was open for that first down. Things like this, you know, like that ball gets batted. Things like this are going to be the difference in every single game whenever you're playing up against good competition and sometimes lesser competition between you winning and losing, between you losing and getting blown out. We've got to clean up the fundamental stuff. Talked about it all week long. On to the next play. All right, so on this play, we're going to have a quick little, you know, wide receiver screen. Just going to dump it off to him right here. We've got a good block right here on the outside, and we just use our speed and athleticism to be able to beat these guys to the outside. And, uh, you know, again, this is a Georgia team that is, you know, more talented, but we're still able to beat them. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're still able to get out here. You know, we're physically dominating right here in this block, and we're able to beat them with speed to the outside. They're going to have a whole lot of trouble, again, up against Alabama because they're just not nearly as good as people are giving them credit for. Now, they are very fundamentally sound, but they are nowhere near what they've been for the past two seasons. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing them getting smacked around by Alabama. All right, so on this play right here, this is a second and five. We're going to have, you know, guys coming around and everything else. But watch the way that we get up to the second level and we're able to convert on this, uh, you know, second down play. Look at this. So we're pulling two. Okay. Domination right here. Going to come up. Dominate right here. Did a good job right here at the line of scrimmage. And then we're going to get up to the second level. And this play is blocked very well. Like I said, we did a good job. Uh, you know, we were not getting physically outmatched at any point in this football game. Now, look, I mean, hats on hats. And then we've got a guy that's coming in here to fill. Look at the way he's feeling half-heartedly and, you know, half-hazardly. And he's going to get ran through for the first down. All right. This is our, you know, backup running back. And that's their starting linebacker. Like I said, we can run through this guy. He's not that big. Our running packs are almost as heavy as he is. Some of them actually are heavier than he is. And whenever you come with a full head of steam, you can run right through this. Okay. So, you know, don't try to crown these guys like they're some great freaking team. We got away from doing this stuff for whatever reason I will never understand. All right, so right here, what we're gonna have is a little, you know, slant route, um, or actually he might be kind of running it off and then we'll have a slant coming in behind it. So what I want for y'all to pay attention to is, you know, it's supposed to be such a dominant front. Watch the pocket that Joe Milton has uh, on this play and he's had it the entire game. I only got sacked once. Pocket is super clean. Again, backup tackle, uh, backup tackle. Okay, these are backups. This guy is wide open. This ball is just too hot and it's too high. We've got to be able to convert. This is a third and three. This is what I'm talking about with Joe Milton. You've got to give us a better opportunity to be able to make these type of plays. All right, so on this play, uh, third and seven, you know, we're going to have Joe Milton with a very good pocket. And then we've got Dylan Sampson one-on-one. -on -one with a linebacker right here. He's gonna flow out here. He's gonna run like a little out route. But what I would have liked to have seen maybe out of Dylan Sampson is, you know, fake here and then come back there. I don't know if, you know, our scheme or play calls call for that, but I, I would have loved to have seen that because he's faster than this guy. Let's go ahead and let this thing roll. Okay, so he's isolated. You see him in the middle of the football field. Now he actually has him beat right here, okay? This is not a great pass by Joe Milton. I think he puts, he made this pass is too flat. Okay, you could have put more air and kind of like led him out here, especially on a third and seven play, dude. There's no one around him for miles. Put some touch on the football, let him go run up under it and, uh, you know, give him an opportunity to be able to win that play. But, you know, he kind of puts it right on him for whatever reason. Obviously, it's that's a tough catch. But if you've got a big guy right on your back, um, you know, it's going to be hard on a third and seven. All right, so right here, we've got a second and two and we're going to get a nice little hitch right here. Pay attention to, again, how clean this pocket is. We did a great job of blocking Georgia's front all day. And, uh, you know, whenever, look at this, they're actually bringing people. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six people coming. And we pick every single one of them up. And this pocket is it's clean. You know, again, back up tackle, back up tackle. And I talked about it before this game that I did not like Jeremiah Crawford playing. But look at that. Takes this guy to the ground. He played great. I'm super proud of you, too. Uh, Crawford so thank you for you know what you've done for this university but now my whole point with saying all that is this because the pockets are so clean we could have thrown the football down the field a lot more okay we could have won one-on-one -on -one up against any of these guys and we just did not take advantage of that we did a great job blocking them but we just we didn't run at them and we didn't pass the ball down the field and it golly it's it's almost heartbreaking to see this type of stuff all right, so here we go again, third and one. We're gonna run it right up this A gap and it's gonna be there, right? They know like they've got to try to come stop this, okay? 
Uh, and they are trying to, but they can't because look at look at that push. Look at this. This guy's way back here, okay? That guy kind of got like a little bit of an inside, you know, deal here, but he's going to get pushed. We're pushing him back. I mean, we're winning at the line of scrimmage. We're winning. Look at all that space, you know? So don't sit here and try to tell me that we got dominated with two backup tackles because we didn't. We should have ran the football a lot more in this game. Now, here we go, right? Okay, second and 10. We've done a good job of this right here, kind of motioning in and then kind of dragging away. But what we're going to have backside is I think this is a dig right here by Chaz Nimrod. Again, pocket is going to be clean, okay? Uh, this is a great job by Joe Milton. Stepping to the side right here. And like we talked about, their linebackers will kind of spy. And once they find that opening, then they try to come at you. So we identified that, uh, you know, in the in the film session on this football team. And this is a great pass right here by Joe Milton. It's also a very good catch by Chaz Nimrod. Tough watching right here. Hey, and this is something that we also talked about, right? Whenever they get a little bit too handsy on you, right? Uh, to the point of pass interference, you're going to start to see that dog come out, right? You're going to start to see that. Didn't we talk about that? And now you're seeing it. Like, dude, you've been talking all game. You've been grabbing me all daggum game. And guess what? You still couldn't stop me and there's no flag thrown. Why don't you shut up? I love that out of Chaz. Good job being a dog. All right, so now I just, I wanted to highlight this because I think that this is, uh, you know, I think this is a pretty critical play, right? So this is going into halftime. As you can see down here, there's only eight seconds left. George has got a bunch of people that's kind of playing like at the, uh, you know, goal line. And what you're going to see right here is Joe Milton, I believe that he was told to do this. Hey, you know, if the touchdown isn't there, just throw it out of the back of the end zone. But watch this as this kind of rolls. Look at this. This guy is back, right? I mean, of course, he's kind of dropping off more because the ball has already been thrown. But Joe Milton's got a strong enough arm that he could have back shouldered this. And we could have just, you know, snuck it right on out of bounds. And, you know, probably would have had right here six seconds. I would say we probably would have had about seven seconds left if we would have done that from this position. Now, you could have run maybe one more play, one more good play, and we could have had an opportunity to score right there. So, again, I don't know, did the chicken or the egg come first? Is that on the coaching staff saying, hey, we don't really trust you, Joe, so throw it out of the back of the end zone? Or was that on Joe saying, hey, you know, if I'm not sure, I'm going to be safe. I'm not too mad at him for being safe, but just trying to point out that this play was here to be made and uh, we just did not capitalize on it. All right, so this is going to be uh, the play where Squirrel White gets open and the ball is going to be overthrown. But, you know, this is a third down, third and long situation. George is only bringing three and they're just going to sit back. Pretty much just means that they're like, oh, well, you know, we don't trust you, Joe Milton, to find somebody open. OK, but he does a great job holding on to the ball, holding on to the ball. We're doing a great job of blocking. Again, the spy finds that little lane that we talked about. And now he's coming. Joe is on time with this throw. OK. He's throwing it at a great time because he knows that that guy's coming. The only thing is just a, just a touch too far. All right, you've got to be able to hit those in situations like this, in games like this. You've got to come up with those passes. You've got to be a lot more accurate. Uh, that one right there, I think, hurt us pretty good. All right, so right here, we're going to have an easy little slant. And, you know, I think that we, you know, could have worked the middle of the football field a lot more. We talked about it coming into this game really want to see a lot more out of our linebackers but you know again pocket is very very clean great job blocking and okay? we're doing a great job of holding up right here joe mill's got all day and this is a very well thrown football okay this is a good catch also by uh squirrel white and does a good job of uh you know getting down and you know we're trying to hurry up let's hurry up hurry up all right and so right here this is going to be a situation that you know again we talked about Wanting to try to get our tight ends matched up uh, up against uh, Tyke Smith, I believe is his name, number 23, who is, uh, you know, the guy that's going to be guarding our tight ends whenever they're flexed out, right? So from here, he actually, he's coming from way over there. But, you know, this is a matchup that we could have utilized so much more, right? So it's third and nine. You know, we don't get the first down, but because he's got such a big body, that should have been an easy pitch and catch all game. Again, we've got to do a much better job uh, as play callers, finding those mismatches and not just looking at a team in such a way that we forget that football is very, very simple. And sometimes it's as simple as, hey, let's just put our bigger guy on their smaller guy. And let's just throw it to him. It can really be that easy. All right, so right here, we're gonna, you know, run off tackle right here. You know, we've got a lead blocker and uh, we're just gonna roll right behind it. Let's let it develop. Again, we're moving them off the football, right? I mean, that hole is there. And I think that, you know, if this was maybe somebody else who would probably got more yards uh, than what we have right here. Really good job, though, by Castles of, you know, getting to that hole and doing a great job blocking. Um, you know, I think that uh, Small could have got a lot more yards out of this, but, you know, like I said, he's not the fastest guy. He doesn't always run fast enough. 
So right here, this is a 38 play, uh, you know, Scrolls coming over. He's gonna be kind of open right here, but he's gonna be open late. What we're gonna notice though, as this thing rolls, is that boom, 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 we got pressure coming from the outside. Joe Milton's pocket is still clean here. And he's going to vacate from the pocket a little bit too soon and too early. He actually has a guy here, probably gonna have a guy here. And like I said, as he kind of flows this way, Squirrel White ends up being open in the middle of this football field. This is a thousand percent on Joe Milton. Uh, there's no if, ands, or buts about this. But he's got to do a much better job of being a playmaker for this football team. All right, so as you can see, there were some plays there to be made. Like I said, man, you know, with two backup tackles and kind of towards the end of that game, having a, you know, second or third, you know, maybe even fourth string guard coming in in Jackson Lampley, you know, towards the end of that football game, we were able to do a pretty good job or, you know, really a solid job of, run blocking and pass blocking throughout the entire game this is a game that you know we actually if you look at the actual real rushing numbers we outrushed georgia in this game and we had a higher yards per carry average than georgia did georgia ran the ball almost twice as much as tennessee did in this game for whatever reason we got away from that running game we should have stuck with it we also had enough time in the pocket to be able to drive the football down the field a lot more we did not utilize our tight ends enough in this game, I do not think. And we could have utilized the middle of that football field a lot more than we did. So all of those things, you know, just kind of saying that there is some room for this offense to get better. And I think that it all starts with coaching. We talked about that in the earlier video, whether that's Halsley or whether that's Typo, they've got to get that together and they've got to be able to identify what makes this team good. What's going to make this team be the best product that they can put out on the football field on Saturdays.